world was faced with the next Great Depression. We're expecting 10 years of stagnation and, and huge uh, unemployment. And we essentially realized that what the world needed to create new jobs was innovative new businesses, that you weren't going to create new jobs by propping up old businesses because that's just a way to stem the bleeding but not a way to create new jobs. And so we thought of, you know, what can you do to create new businesses and new jobs? And competitions are one of the most uh, highly leveraged catalysts for business creation and job creation. And so we thought, well, let's launch the world's largest ever competition to create new businesses and new jobs. And uh, so we left our, our jobs in, in January, we gave notice, and we sort of fully finally left in May. Uh, and we went out and just started asking questions of all the experts in the ecosystem. What can we do to create the world's largest competition? What should it look like? How should we build it? How do we attract entrants? How do we attract partners? How do we raise the money? And we held about 3,000 different uh, or meetings with about 3,000 different people over the course of that year. We managed to raise uh, over $300,000 to to run that planning process and then we came up with what is now uh, Mass Challenge. And originally we didn't envision having office space at all. We actually envisioned doing this as a disparate competition around the world and people would submit everything through the website and get mentored through the website or remotely or through local mentors in whatever their area of the world was. Uh, but increasingly we recognize that one of the key points of leverage in the competition model is one-on-one -on -one mentoring and that mentoring works best when you're in person. Um, and in addition, we also had high hopes for sort of collaboration between the teams uh, and across industries in particular so that uh, somebody working in healthcare could learn from somebody working on software and vice versa because a lot of the business models can be shared across industries. And so we really decided that we absolutely had to have a central location where people could congregate, we could run training sessions, uh, teams could work with each other, mentors could come and work with the teams, investors could come and meet with multiple different teams at the same time to provide uh, leverage on their time and effort. And uh, so we started looking for office space. And originally we were just looking at empty warehouses and really run down locations uh, off, off the main path, but it turns out that there was a lot of real estate available because the economy was so poor and a lot of really good real estate available. And we had a really compelling proposition uh, to real estate developers because we could put 100 plus startup companies in one location and that meant we would attract a lot of lawyers, a lot of investors, a lot of corporate executives and a lot of media attention which can help to sell that office space. And so we met with Joe Fallon who's developing the Fan Pier location has multiple buildings planned over 10 year uh, period and has already built this first building, uh, One Marina Park Drive, which is a gorgeous luxury office building just on the edge of the downtown Boston area right on the water. And he agreed to give us uh, tw over 22,000 square feet of office space uh, to be shared by 100 plus startups. Uh, and uh, he agreed even to purchase uh, furniture. So he's going to purchase uh, you know, reclaimed furniture that had been uh, you know, from bankrupt companies and he would go and buy it and, and put it in place and we really, you know, we had high hopes for the, for the space but at this point, you know, beggars can't really be choosers so we weren't demanding high quality uh, furniture. We didn't have a particular design in mind or a layout or structure or types of desks or chairs. We literally just said, buy us chairs and tables and we'll be happy, we'll make do with it. And so he went and, and uh, found some furniture and it's essentially a, a large cubicle farm. Uh, it works pretty well. The, 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 the walls are not uh, that tall, so there still gives it an element of airiness and, and light uh, throughout the space. And then he strung, uh, and we strung uh, fluorescent lights throughout the space, uh, covering that and had electrical drops hanging from the ceiling. And so when, we, when he first gave us the plan, uh, we were pleased because we had something and we were excited, but we also were a little bit, became a little bit concerned that it was too much of a cubicle farm, too much of a maze, it wasn't human enough, there weren't enough areas to collaborate and interact with each other. People would be sort of locked away in their little cell working. And in, in collaboration is just so central to innovation and entrepreneurship. These are, each of these teams might be, you know, some of them are only one person, some of them are seven, they kind of average around three people. But, but none of them have all of the skill that they need. They're all faced with daunting tasks to launch a new business. They, they need to figure out team management. They have to sell to customers. They have to raise money. They have to build a technology. Uh, they have to uh, understand their market and beat out competitors, advertise. There's so much that they have to do that there's no way they individually can pull it all off. And so it's really important for them to work together with others that have other sets of expertise. And so we became nervous that the space as laid out 
wouldn't provide sufficient opportunity for collaboration. And we actually uh, dropped uh, a section of the cubicles so that we could then just put in tables and chairs and have an open, almost library style uh, format. Uh, but we never really secured uh, those tables until uh, we finally met with Danielle at Turnstone and Turnstone agreed to provide us some, some furniture and help us to design a more collaborative area in that open space. So then we, we tried that out with some furniture and it worked incredibly well. We have a, a big uh, uh, whiteboard along the inner core of the building that people can use for collaboration space and we have a training area and then we have this open collaborative area with uh, open desks and uh, chairs and the kind of campfire meeting areas and, and, and other great furniture. And so we have really now high hopes that we can build that out over the next year. For the, for the first year, we had kind of a small test area and it worked out so well that we decided to expand it dramatically in year two together with Turnstone who helped to provide some advice and guidance and consulting and some additional furniture to enable that.